Hi friends, welcome to Ufa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 44 in PySpark playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about partition by function in PySpark. So let me explain you. Usually in PySpark, when you work with data frames, what will happen? Uh, if you are trying to process some set of rows, all the rows will be partitioned across different worker nodes. So for example, if you have let's say six rows, so two rows into one worker road, two here, two here. So that means the data will be partitioned on the nodes and whatever the transformations you apply on the data frame, that transformations will parallelly execute all the partitions and finally data will be collected and presented. So this way, you are splitting the data into multiple partitions and processing them. So that is the reason PySpark is very much speed comparing to data frame. Sorry, comparing to Pandas. So in Pandas actually everything will work on a single load kind of thing. Okay, there is no partitioning concept there. But in PySpark data frames, you, the data will be partitioned across the nodes. The same thing applies when you are trying to save the data into some disk. So let's assume you want to store the data into some data lake storage or into Databricks file system for that matter. Wherever you want to store the data, it will be good if you can split the data and store it. For example, if your data set is small, if your data is small, then it's okay you can go and store it on a disk like a single file. Okay, you no need to partition. But let's assume you are dealing with very large data, then better to split a partition that data on the disk as well like how that PySpark data frame is partitioning while it is processing similarly while storing the data partition that large data into multiple partitions on the disk on the storage and store it that way the system will be very uh, quickly processed it is like a optimized design since you partitioned data whatever the partition you want you can query only that data from the disk or from the storage that way your transformations are reading the data from the storage will be very fast comparing to normally storing every day and all the data as a single file okay so let me practically explain you this with that example so that you will make sense of it so let me go to uh, browser here I have already opened my Databricks workspace and here let's try to create a new notebook and let me name this notebook name as partition by notebook okay so this is the name of the notebook I am giving Python is a default language this is my cluster let me hit create button to create this notebook here notebook got created successful let me close this pop-up window here let me zoom little bit and here let's try to create a new data frame so I am using a data variable to hold the rows of the data frame uh, I already discussed like how to create a data frame with hard-coded values in the PySpark playlist at the starting please watch it all the videos are in sequence order so watch them in the same order that way you will get most out of it so here I am adding like ID name then maybe gender then maybe department column okay it will become one row so let me copy this let me add another row into data frame so for now it is a list actually but I will convert it as a data frame very soon so let's say like Wafa is HR department and then third row maybe like three and name is Asi uh, female and okay IT department so now let's try to create a variable called schema in which I will be having a schema for this data frame that means column names so here I will be naming like gender okay then finally department column okay so now what I can do you know that spark keyword in Databricks or Synapse will give you spark session object on top of it we have a create data frame function to that I am passing my data and schema variables and this entire whole code will create a data frame and that data frame I am storing in a variable called df now finally let me use this show function and let me hit shift enter to execute this command once this command executed successfully you can see your data frame ready here so let's wait for command to complete here command executed successfully and you can see our data frame is created so this is fine let's assume this is the data which I want to store it onto storage account or maybe onto Databricks file system so for this demo I will try to store the data onto Databricks file system only in my Databricks playlist I have already shown also in my Synapse playlist I have already shown how to store the data 
as csv or parquet files on to storage accounts like adls so please watch that so for this demo i will be using like databricks file system only for that i will be going data and here i will be clicking this dbfs menu to see the databricks file system so here i have a location like file store under under this location i want to create a file folder like employees in which i want to store my all employees by partitioning the data so let me show you how to do that so what i when you do a partition actually you can define like on which column you want to partition the data so let's assume i can partition the data on department column so then totally it will become two partitions because it department and hr department only two types of the departments we have so it will become two partitions i can also partition based on the gender so that way it will become three partition uh, two partitions again like male gender and female gender right you got it right so we can define during partitioning the data we can define which column to take according to our use case in real time scenario so let me try to partition the data based on the department here so for that what i will be doing so in my past videos i have already explained there is something called data frame dot write instance on which you have like parquet function that will help you to store the files as a parquet files onto databricks file system or onto some storage right so the same parquet file function i am using it here and here let me do one thing before executing this let me use help function here to see the documentation of this parquet function so this help function will generate documentation you can see you can define a path where you want to write the parquet file you can also define like partition by on which column you want to perform the partition so we will be using this partition by uh, parameter to pass the partition column name so what i will be doing it here is let me remove this help function from here and here to this i will be passing my path so my path will be as i said like file store so let me uh, copy the path once again so let me go to data menu and dbfs under this under file store i want to have a employees folder so let me copy this and let me go back to my data frame here so under file sorry my notebook here under file store maybe i want to have like employees folder under which i want to store my parquet files okay and then we can also define like mode parameter uh, in which we can say like whether we want to overwrite the data on this location or not everything we already discussed all this so please watch my python playlist from the starting and also as i said let's use this partition by parameter for this parameter i am giving my department column name so now let me try to execute this and see what will happen so let me hit shift enter to execute this command here so once the command execution completes we can navigate to my databricks file system and i can see what happened there so let's wait command executed successfully now let me go to data menu and under dbfs now let's go try to under file system you can see there is employees folder created and if i go inside employees it created two different folders department equals to hr1 department equals to it1 how that created that is created because i partitioned data right what it will happen based on department i partition right for every department it will try to create a separate folder and inside that folder it will try to store the parquet files only with the employees information of that department so for example for it there is one partition folder under which you will be having a parquet files which contains only this employee information and this employee information that means two rows partitioned separately as a small file and again another path will be there for the hr department under which it will contain all the employees of the hr department so that means this data also partitioned as a small file so like this data will be partitioned into small small files actually all the entire data will be under employees folder if you drill down it will be having a separate folder for every partition under which corresponding rows will be there so to practically make you sense of it what i will be doing let me try to use this we already know how to read parquet files into data frame right so let's try to use that code here spark dot read dot parquet and to this function i can give path of the location which i want to read so let's try to read entire employees folder so if you closely remember under employees folder we have subfolders as well 
but since I am giving employees folder, it will navigate all the subfolders and try to take data from this folder as well and this folder as well. So that means if I run this, it is going to give all these three rows actually. So let me hit shift. Uh, so this will generate a data frame. So finally, let's try to use a show function here. So let me shift enter to execute this command. Once the command executed successful, I will be seeing all the three rows. See ID column, name column, gender column, department and all the three rows. So far it is good. But if you remember for every partition, it create a separate folder, right? So what this time I want to do, I want to take or read all the data from the department equals to HR folder. So what I will be doing it here is under employees. Let me do one thing. Let me keep this as it is and let me execute this in another cell here under employees where there is a folder called department equals to IT under which all the parquet file data read it. That's what I am doing. So now let me hit shift enter to execute this command. Now if you closely observe, we got only two employees. These two employees belongs to IT department. Employee ID 1, 3. If you see employee ID 1 and 3 belongs to IT department. And another thing to observe, if you see here, when you read all the data, it gives me department column as well. But here, when I am trying to read only partitioned data, it is only giving me three columns. This partitioned column information it is not giving. The reason is uh, the data bricks or the PySpark will save the data in that manner so that uh, since the data is already partitioned and uh, that partitioned column along with the value is already available in folder, it won't store that entire column from that uh, files inside the folder. It will remove that column. Why it will do like that? Just to make sure uh, because in real time you will handle with large amount of data, right? Storing this same value for every row will be over headache for you actually. It will cause slowness. It is not the optimized design, right? So to make sure your uh, data read from the storage or data write to the storage to make sure it should be fast, that's how it will be handled in that fashion automatically. So this will all happen automatically. You cannot control it. When you partition by, it will intentionally remove that column name and keep that column name in folder path and it will make sense as well, right? So why we need, by the folder path itself, we know which department column is going to be IT for all these rows. So then again, storing that column for that all the rows is not make sense actually. That will slow down your system, right? So that's why by default, that's how it behaves actually. So similarly, if I use department equals to HR, then I will be getting only HR department related information because only that rows are partitioned into that folder. So this is how it will work. So now some people will be thinking whether it will partition based on multiple row, multiple columns or not. Yes, it will partition. So for example, if I want to partition department and inside the department, again, I, I want to partition by gender. So what I can do, I can pass partition by department, then gender also. So I can pass like this. And this time, let's assume I want to store it under employees one folder. So let me hit shift enter to execute this code now. And let's wait for command execution to complete. And then let me navigate to data folder dbfs under file store. If you see, uh, let me go back to file store employees one, right? So if I go inside employees one, see we have IT department and HR department. And if I go under IT department, I have for gender male and field. So like this, you can partition all multiple columns as well. So even that is possible. Okay. So let's go back to presentation. So that is how this partition function will be useful to you to partition the large data set into small small files based on one or multiple columns. And uh, that is, it will give you a optimized design in real case where you can query fast or you can write the data fast or you can read the data fast actually. So partitioning data when you are dealing with large data set is actually a very good habit actually. So I hope you got an idea. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications whenever I add videos. Thank you so much.